And welcome to Ship Philly First, a presentation of Philiport, the Port of Philadelphia. I'm Brad Satin, and we're here today at the Packer Avenue Marine Terminal in South Philly, talking about the tremendous growth the port has seen recently, how it compares to others from all around the world, and its strategic plan for the future. Big things certainly in the works. We're joined today by Jerry Sweeney, the chairman of the Port of Philadelphia, and Damon Jericho, the global director of ports and terminals with Hatch, a very well-known and well-respected consulting firm working with Philiport. Jerry and Damon, thanks guys so much for uh, being with us. A little chilly today. A little chilly. Delighted, here. delighted. <laughs> Jerry, so, so let's talk about you for a moment. Sure. President and CEO of Brandywine Realty Trust. As a business leader, what led you to get involved with the Port of Philadelphia and public service in such an impactful, important way? Well, my core business is real estate development, planning, logistics, zoning approvals, land utilization, using labor in the most efficient way possible. So when the governor approached me about Philiport opportunity, it became very clear there was tremendous growth potential here. So the ability to participate in that growth, lead a team through that charge was just too big of a civic imperative to pass up. And certainly doing it at a very important time as we're gonna talk about. And Damon, you're with Hatch. Tell us a little bit about who Hatch is and your work with Philiport. Absolutely, so Hatch is a global consulting company and we're, we're focused on making positive change in the infrastructure, energy and mining spaces. Uh, in infrastructure, we focus on freight rail, <laughs> ports and terminals, aviation, roads and bridges. Uh, and I lead the ports and terminals uh, group for Hatch. And with the accent, South Philly? It's uh, very close to South Philly, Australia, <laughs> Brisbane, Australia. Well, well, welcome, we're glad you're here. You. Jerry, uh, talking about the governor and Governor Wolf providing more capital dollars to Philiport than any governor in the past in Pennsylvania. Let's talk about how those dollars are used, starting with the deepening of the main channel of the Delaware right behind us here. It's, been, it's actually been fairly amazing. I mean, the governor has committed over $550 million during his administration to grow this port. Predating that was a $168 million commitment by the Commonwealth to dredge the river to 45 feet depth. That depth was really an inflection point for the port's growth trajectory. Uh, it enabled us to accommodate the vast majority of the world's shipping traffic. And on once that was completed, the governor saw the opportunity. So he's invested $550 million to buy everything from three post Panamax cranes that you see behind me, additional warehouse space, acquire additional land, build the first marine terminal in Philipport's history in the last 50 years, which is the marine terminal down at Southport that handles 180,000 cars a year and really put Philadelphia in the map as a row row operator. It is so important because it's such a competitive industry. Other ports you're competing against. So Damon, as an international consultant, you've worked with ports all around the world. How do they compare? What is Philly doing right? What do you see in Philiport that you like? Yeah, right. So as you say, it's competitive, right? So what Philadelphia's edge really is, is proximity. It's proximity to, frankly, tens of millions of customers, direct access to Lehigh Valley and, and the distribution cluster along New Jersey Turnpike. It really is unique. And right over our shoulder here is the I-95, I mean, just a backbone of distribution. And that, that really is beneficial and, and really quite a, a unique factor for Philadelphia. And that's because it's not just about within the grounds of the port, right? It's getting things moving by rail and by, by, by truck. Absolutely, it's, it, time is money, right? It's really about moving that cargo as fast and as efficiently through the system as possible. Jerry, the Port of Philadelphia has seen tremendous container growth. Interesting statistic in the past eight years, 12% compound annual growth. Beyond those capital dollars, what do you attribute that success to? Teamwork, uh, we're all about people here at the port, whether that's the leadership team at Philiport the leadership team at our tenants, and the labor that works here every day. The combination of the infrastructure investment by the governor, the commitment to cause that everyone who works at Philiport has, really create the catalyst for future growth. So we were able to kind of rebrand the port, undertake a global marketing campaign to make sure that the global markets understood that the Philadelphia port of today is different than yesterday, and that we're very well positioned for growth. So we talk about the future, Damon. Uh, what's happening right now is this comprehensive strategic facility plan that you are working with Philiport on. What is that? Why is that so important? Uh, absolutely. So, so the comprehensive strategic facility plan is a long range plan. It's a, it's a roadmap of the future. It's really steps out the Philiport's plans and ambitions 
over the short, medium and long term to attain a, vision, a, future, a future state where they really do capture as much opportunity as possible and really provide benefit to all of their stakeholders. And speaking of stakeholders, do they get a voice, a say in this? Absolutely. It, it, it's very much a proactive, interactive process that the Philip Porter is engaging on. And it's so important to engage the stakeholders, both the tenants, the community and the port users. Okay. Uh, we've been working with Philip Port since June of this year, 2022, uh, and, and so mid, midway through next year we can start to see conclusions and outcomes. And finally, Jerry, you've got to be very proud. Again, you talk about the teamwork, the infrastructure, the money being poured in. Uh, how's the future looking? The future looks bright. I mean, it, it's actually fascinating when you think about all the work that's been done by the team over the last close to decade was really just about creating the platform for future growth. You know, our goal is to grow our, our container volume to 1.2 million, continue to expand the break bulk and the railroad cargo, working with organizations like Damon's and Hatch to really think about the future is, what, is what's really key to our future growth potential. These are exciting times. Jerry Sweeney and Damien Jericho, thanks so much guys for joining us. Thank you, Brad. And thank you as well for joining us. I'm Brad Satin. For much more information on the Port of Philadelphia, just go to the website. It is philaport.com. And we'll see you again soon for another episode of Ship Philly First.